Good morning and welcome to Sedona. Sedona was not in the uh, on the agenda. We were supposed to head up to uh, from the Grand Canyon. We were supposed to head up to uh, Monument Valley. Good old Forrest Gump. You know where that was filmed, his desert scene, and up to Mexican Hat from there. But uh, looked at the weather a couple days ago and uh, below freezing at night up there. They're getting a cold snap. So we, uh, we were done with Marble Canyon and Grand Canyon, Lee's Ferry, the Vermilion Cliffs, just spectacular. Make sure you check out those videos. Come on, Brady. So, um, yeah, so we came south. Uh, it's a place I've always wanted to check out. It, uh, any type, anytime there's some geological stuff going on, it's, I'm like a magnet to those, to those spots. But uh, anyway, we're doing the uh, Bell Trail. Uh, very close to where we're camped. Over at the, uh, I think it's called the Rarick. Um, uh, BLM spot. It's in the Rarick Canyon. Anyway, uh, this is about a seven mile loop. Nothing, probably nothing like those canyons that we saw, it's actually this way. Come here, Brady. And, uh, but uh, yeah, uh, Brady's paws feeling a little bit better. I did, uh, I did buy him the, uh, the booties finally. I, I made a pit stop specifically for that at PetSmart and got him. He doesn't have them on because this ground is so much more forgiving and he's, uh, he woke up this morning not limping so let's see how it goes if he uh, starts to limp I'm gonna put him on immediately and get that on camera because that's gonna be something to see <laughs> I mean that's just gonna be oh my gosh but uh, yeah anyway wanted to uh, talk to you about those canyons and uh, those canyon hikes Unbelievable. I will never forget them. But that's not really what I wanna what I wanna talk about. I wanna talk about how it challenged us, Brady and I. We had no idea how difficult they would be and with his little paw and me carrying the camera gear and you know a dog it took it took quite a bit of effort mental effort physically also but mental as well and what it ended up doing was Our relationship, Brady and I's relationship, is closer. It's, it's more, I mean, when you hike like that, and it's literally just you guys and you're trusting one another, you know, that it's a bond. You know, and the more you get outside your comfort zone, the more trust is needed so you don't let fear, you know, penetrate and panic, give up, etc. And so, you know, he was stretched. He was definitely stretched with some of those leaps. And I was stretched with the endurance and carrying the gear 
and managing Brady as well. And every time we got through a challenging, a challenging spot, it was just another sort of notch on the belt, if you will, of, of trust, confidence, ability that we could use for the next for the next challenge, whatever it may be. It's amazing how our relationship, which was ridiculously intimate and, and, and just our communication between us was already insanely unreal. Those of you that know us understand that. But now, it's, it's another level. It's something that I haven't seen. You know, I thought we were maxed out. I thought, I thought it couldn't get any better. But it has. So it's nice to, you know, just be doing this. This is considerate moderate. <laughs> and it's not. It's very easy so far. This is about two miles, two, two and a half miles out of uh, seven. And uh, it's, but of course, you know, where we came from, I mean, we literally were trying to hike trails that weren't even part of the trails, part of an official trail map. And, uh, and it, uh, we were denied. The Colorado eluded us twice. Once, because of just waterfalls, just couldn't do it. There was no way. And then once, again, it was a fall. Brady wouldn't make about an eight foot, seven, eight foot. It was a drop and I was able to hang from the ledge and jump only about a foot when I'm hanging. And I thought that he would figure out another way. I didn't expect him to ever make that jump, but I thought he'd figure out another way, you know, being only about two feet tall, how to get around. But he didn't, he wanted to follow me and he was stuck. And his limp, I just, and we had, I mean, that was only, I don't know, maybe about, that was about three and a half miles in of slow going canyon hiking. You saw it. If you, if you didn't, go check it out. But uh, I decided we're done. So I climbed back up. And boy, was he excited to see me because he was nervous. And there's that trust again. You know, we didn't, you know, I didn't leave him. He, you know, he, it was awesome. And, uh, you know, we, he hit his limit and I hit mine and we came back. And, uh, and as a result, there's trust. Trail's changing up a bit. A little more rocky and steeper. Looks like we're probably going up there. Maybe that's why it's called Bell Tower. Might be. I didn't really do too much research on it. First panoramic beauty. This is up there.
Let's keep going around this bend here. We're almost at the end of the trail. It's uh, three and a half one way, three and a half back. Of course, we're getting close to the end here. Certainly, uh, it's not anticlimactic for sure. Definitely know why. Gives you a good reason to to, to do this hike. Wished it was all like this, but look at this. Just look at this. The deep brownish red in contrast with the blue sky. It just never gets old for me. It's, there's just, I don't know. There, there's just a connection between, between between this these two these two phenomenons the the blue sky and the and the deep brownish red it just it's something it's a deep connection that i just feel it's He's not afraid of heights. Happy land, guys. Happy land. Who's this guy? Who's this guy? I know this guy. You wanna come home with me, buddy? Yeah? Okay. We're not quite done, though. We're getting close. This reminds me so much of Portugal. This plant. These thorns right here. In Portugal, people from the country cut them and they regrow they cut them and they eat little snails and they're absolutely delicious the small ones in my opinion the big the big snails yeah they're okay they're just not as good as the little ones it's a beautiful bush not sure what it is. Doesn't want to be touched though. Look at those thorns. I think this is the end. Very nice. Finishes at the uh, at the creek. What a wonderful spot! What a wonderful spot for a picnic. What, you want to? Go ahead. Go ahead, let's see if you're brave enough. Jump right on in there. Big jump. Big jump, let's see it. Let's see it. Go ahead, right on in, right on in. Right on in there. Right on in there. Big jump. Yeah! Brady! Very nice. I didn't think you would. I honestly didn't think you would, but he has been working so hard on that trail. The thing about Brady is, Brady's a German short hair. I know I've said it a hundred times, but the main thing I want to mention is he is always working. When you see him zigzagging, 
he, his attention is just hardly ever on the trail itself. His attention is always what's going on in the woods. What's behind that rock? What's behind that tree? That looks like a good place for an animal. That looks like a good place for a bird to be hiding, etc. And so what he's doing for you, he's working for you. He's making sure that, that you know, you're not passing up any opportunities to hunt something. And he's, you know, that's what he does. He's extremely thorough and intense. So he's obviously, you know, he's got the German short hair pointer 100% from his mom. And then you mix that in there. So that's the hunting side. You mix that in there with the, with the border collie, the obsessive compulsiveness and the intelligence, undisputed intelligence, the smartest breed of any dog. You have like, you just have a, an extremely thorough you know dog intensity i mean he never takes a nap unless i'm quiet and still just wants to work and uh he's a great guy and uh i wouldn't wouldn't never ever i've never once doubted bringing him on this trip to the contrary you have to come up through here now buddy see it up through here brady yeah through there there you go.